Well, hello there, my flagon of YouTube followers. Today, we are going to do the conclusion of the Barney Oliver saga. Uh, there's been a lot of gyrations here. Uh, I have completely reorganized my shop and uh, and finally finished the Barney Oliver. There's been a lot of uh, delays around this project, to put it mildly. Um, and it's one of those things where just when you think you're finished, something else comes up. But anyway, uh, that's all done now, and the thing's back together. So let us take uh, a moment to appreciate the rather handsome amplifier. Um, as you can see, the wooden sides are now uh, stained and finished. Um, they uh, were supplied raw wood, and in, in the instruction manual, it tells you to sand and finish them and the previous owner never did that so took care of that uh the top here which was very very chalky and dry looking it's it's, it's an aluminum top but it's got a, a very thin uh sheet of like plastic textured contact paper on it and uh, it was very dry and chalky but it responded very very well to a light treating of silicones you know basically armor all uh, the original screw in the back here is missing. Uh, it was missing when I got the unit. So we'll have to find one that hopefully is black and doesn't stick out like that. So well, let's talk about the amplifier here. Um, and let us um, set up for some tests. So what we got down here is we got a, a dummy load. In this case, I'm just hooking up one channel. Um, and we're uh, going into an 8 ohm dummy load. And uh, we're going to do a frequency response test. And what we're trying to see is how well this amplifier matches its factory specs. And we can see what's interesting about this amplifier is that it's got two base position switches. It's got uh, boost out and boost in as labeled on here, on, on the front of, of the amplifier, that's flat and boost. It's interesting to note that flat is not truly flat. Um, it comes with a, it comes with about a two and a half for three dB boost centered right around 22 Hertz. It looks like based on, on this uh, diagram. And then, um, assuming you're not using any of the, uh, the low-pass filters at the top, and you have it set to 20K, it begins its rather sharp roll-off right there at 20K. But as you can see, it also begins to dip uh, before 20K. And it starts to roll off very gradually at around 10. And then when it gets to 20, it just falls off like a, like a rock. So what's interesting is that this amplifier really does not have a flat setting. It's always got some kind of boost in the bass, and it's always got some kind of bandwidth limiting at the top end. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look and and do a measurement and see if we can uh, test this amplifier and see how closely it matches this frequency response curve. So over here, uh, over here on the key site. Um, what we've got is we've got the the signal generator. Oh, that's got a glare from that angle. We have got the signal generator output feeding the input of the amplifier, and uh, probe one is also a channel one is also connected to the generator output, and uh, probe two is connected to the uh, speaker terminal down there at the dummy load. And what we're doing right now is we are sweeping through the frequencies and plotting ourselves a frequency response curve. And so far it looks really accurate. It looks very similar to what we see. Now there's some uh, scaling differences in the way this curve is showing up and the way it's printed in the manual. So for example, in the manual, we've got five decibels per division. And right here, uh, we've got 10 dB per division. Now we can change that, but we have to change it after the test and for whatever 
infuriating reason, this scope doesn't remember that setting. So you have to change it from 10 dB per division to 5 dB per division every single time you run the test. Uh, I have got the uh, the test doing uh, 50, 50 samples per uh, decade, so it's, it's a little bit on the slow side right now. Um, but I want to give the, the smoothest, most accurate plot we can so we can see how we did here. Um, it was during this testing uh, a couple months ago that I discovered the imbalance in the uh, potentiometer and uh, the uh, stepped attenuator, that is. If, uh, if you haven't seen that video, you might want to go back and look at that. That was uh, an absolute nightmare to work on that thing. Um, having done it now and having taken that thing apart a couple times, I could do it a lot less destructively and, um, and make a much quicker job of it in the future. But uh, anyway, the end result is that the, uh, the stepped attenuator is now very, very tightly matched. And so what we should see here on this plot when we do one channel and then the other channel is we should see that the gain is identical. So let us uh, change... Oh, whoops. Let us, uh, let's see, uh, chart. Let's put this on a 5 dB. There we go. And... Um, now let's move the marker. Um, let's move it right down to the right around 1k. And the reason I'm starting here is because I want you to see that the on this scale here we're about 0.85 dB past the center line. So keep that in mind, you know, past the zero line. So keep that in mind here that we're dealing with a you know eight tenths of a dB offset. But right away. We see a very, very similar curve to what we see on the manual. So let's take a look here at the very top of the curve. We have 3.73 decibels. And that's the very top of it. And that's at 22.9 hertz. And if we take a look... Over here now, see it's it's 3.73 dB, but we need to we need to take about 0.8 dB away from that. <clears throat> so it's really about 2.9 dB is what we're seeing at 22.9 hertz. And if we look here on the chart, we can see that on this chart it looks more like 2.5 or so dB, but very very close. And the center frequency is exactly, and that's that's the 20 hertz line there. And we see it's just to the right of the 20 hertz line. So so that is exactly what we want to see. And it looks like by the time we get to 100 hertz, it should be flattened out. So let's take a look here and uh, move the cursor out to 100 hertz. There's 100 hertz. Okay, so we're basically flattened out. It's, it's 1.07 dB, and then it, it eventually flattens out around 0.85 or so, right? So again, very, very close to the original spec. And when we get up to, it should be right around 10K. Yeah, it's right where it starts to gradually roll off at 10K there. And then by the time we get to 20K, here, boom, falls off like a rock. So very very good so that's one channel tested so let us come around the back here and hook up to the right channel and let us rerun the same test now what we're looking for is prior to me rebuilding well we're, you know we're looking for an identical curve like this obviously um, and prior to me rebuilding the stepped attenuator um, and the right channel was two to three, ten, you know, 0.2 to 0.3 dB hotter than the left channel consistently. So if we look here at the 1K, at the 1K point, <clears throat> we're at 0.85 dB. Um, so uh, that is the left channel. So let us see how the right channel performs. It should be very close to that same value. So let's rerun the analysis. And so what I've done is, 
I'm, I am splitting the signal using the mode selector. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking the, uh, the input from the left and feeding it to both channels and uh, you know, right through aux one. And we've got the bass still set to flat and we've got the filter all the way up to 20K. So let us see what we got here. And the nice thing is if you look in the upper right corner, we can see the results as they come in. So 22.9, again, that was where the peak was. So that's identical to the other channel. That was never out of spec uh, on this amplifier. It was just a straight-up gain mismatch. So when it hit that flat spot in the curve that it's approaching right now as it gets past 100, um, when it hits that flat spot, That's where it was consistently, you know, 0.2 to 0.3 dB hotter than the other channel. And we can see right now it's uh, uh, 0.82 dB, 0 0.81, 0 0.79. So, yeah, basically, you know, within a couple hundredths of a decibel identical to the other channel. So that is very, very well matched now. And despite the incredible pain in the ass it was to rebuild that pot and replace all those resistors in it. it it's worth it. Um, you can see the results right here. <clears throat> and then we're approaching the 10K point where it should start rolling off very gradually. Then we get to... the 20k and it's just plummeting like a rock now again we have to change the scale back to 5 db per division because like i said this, this software and the scope doesn't remember which is very frustrating i'm gonna have to file a bug report on that or something um so let's go to chart scale 5 db per all right and uh let us, whoa, I, okay, back, move marker, okay, so let's see here, where is our top of the peak is at 3.64 dB at 22.9, so the, the top of the peak is in exactly the same place, and there is you know, a couple hundredths of a decibel difference in gain now as opposed to a third of a dB. And we get out to the 1K point. 0.78 dB, and it was, what, 0.8 or 0.81 or something like that on the other channel? Uh, just very, very tight match now. And we get out to... 10k point where it starts to roll off and then the 20k point where boom falls off like a rock so we can say that both channels match this boost out curve perfectly uh, let's just for fun let's take a let's run it one more time with the boost in I don't know that we need to do this on both channels I've already done this on both channels and I I know it looks I know it looks good uh, but just for fun, just to show everyone here. Well, let's see what that what that curve looks like with the boost in. <clears throat> so after we do this, we're going to change the rig a little bit, and we're going to hook up the Keithley over here, and we're going to do some distortion measurements and power measurements. And make sure that this thing can actually put out the power it claims it can put out. I already, spoiler alert, I already know it can. <laughs> yeah, that curve is way up there past, what's it, like 12 dB, something like that, 13 dB. So let's see, where is it supposed to top out on the chart, right? It's supposed to hit that top right Right, it looks like it at 20, 22, or somewhere in there, and it hits it right around. It looks like 12 dB on this chart, 
maybe 12 and a half, 12, it looks like 12. Let's just call it 12 dB. Now again, keep in mind we have like a tenths of a dB difference between where zero is on here and where it is in the manual. That's just an artifact of the granularity of these measurements. I can't uh, apparently with this revision of the software scale it and adjust it so that they flatline this directly on zero. Um, the only way I could accomplish that uh, since the, the the stepped attenuator in this amp is in 2 dB steps, so I basically need to make, you know, an 8 tenths of a dB attenuator and assert, insert that in line with the signal coming in. If I did that, I could make those lines line up flat. But that's not important. So there we go. We get, we're out to the 20K point and plunges like a rock. Again, it's back on the 10 dB per division scale. We'll have to change that again. Chart 5 dB. Okay. So, let's take a look at the marker. And let's see here. Right at the top, we have... 13.15 dB directly at 20 hertz, which is exactly where it is on the manual. Let's take a look. Uh, boom, right at 20 hertz, and it says 13.15 dB, but remember, we need to subtract 0.8 from that. So when we do that, you know, we get like 12.3, 12.2, and you know, it's that's exactly what the manual says it should be and it says that boost shouldn't really flatten out it looks like until we hit that 400 hertz line right around four or five hundred is where that flattens out so let's follow along here and take this up to the 400 hertz and uh yeah point 97 dB and we flatten out at around 0.8 right at 1k so yeah that, that looks correct and then well, we get out here to the 20 and shh, gone okay so there we go the frequency response of this amplifier is bang on what it says it will be in the charts which is excellent so let us uh, rejigger everything here and set up for power output test, distortion test. All right, we're back now and we've changed the rig a little bit here. Uh, so what we're doing now is we're running both channels of the amp into 8 ohm dummy load resistors. Um, one of the channels we're just going to look at on the scope oh that terminal came off that test clip. there we go and uh the other one we're going to look at on the scope and on the keithley and actually the, the the one that we're looking at just on the scope probably don't even need to do that because we can just switch channels with this setup very easily so <clears throat> the keithley uh has its uh function generator and uh, let's start uh, out by uh, changing the frequency from 1K to 60 Hertz. High impedance output, uh, 1.35 volts out. Good enough. Okay. So uh, what we can do is we can now start ramping up the volume on the Barney Oliver and uh, we start to see a signal appear. It looks like we need to do some horizontal scaling here. Come on. Okay. Now 2.5 volts out. Climbing up. 5 volts out. 
still looking good over here. So what we want to do is we want to turn this up until it clips and then back it off. That's clipped. Okay, so let's back it off. Now, it's, it's, it says 22.2 volts AC there, but I do not trust this scope's voltage measurements because this Keithley says 20.2, not 22.2. So I'm going with the Keithley measurement because <laughs> I can guarantee that this thing is taking a far more accurate AC voltage measurement than this scope is. Um, which is unfortunate, and yet another thing to complain to Keysight about. Um, so, I think that's going to be, well, that's probably the result right there already, but let's just punch it in again. Uh, 20.24, enter, square it, and then divide it by 8, to 51.2 watts. So, there we go, at 60 hertz, we have 51.2 watts, the specification is 50 watts continuous. So, that's good, let us uh, test the other channel real quick, um, I'll just swap, I'll just swap these two. So. As we're doing these tests, we're we're putting the we're putting the signal into both channels. So we're driving both channels identically at the same time. We're just only bothering to look at the output of one channel and measure the, the distortion. So now we'll crank. Well, that's interesting. Aux one. Oh, direct. I need to put this in dual mono mode. I guess I wasn't driving the other channel that time. Stand corrected. Well, we're driving both channels now. Uh, and there's a clip, so bring it back. Ah, see. Okay, now that we're driving both channels, the, the total power before clipping is coming down just a little bit. So that's 20 volts. So that's exactly 50 watts because 20 squared is 400. 400 divided by the 8 ohm load is 50. So that is 50 watts exactly. Um, and I suspect now that we're actually driving both channels, if I repeat, if I repeat this test on the first channel, switching back, that we're going to get a similar, if not identical, number. Instead of 51.2, we're going to be right back at 50. So let's see here. Crank it up. Clip. Pull it back one. Yeah. 20, okay, yeah, it's identical. So both both channels are putting out exactly 50 watts. Um, if you don't drive one of the channels, you can actually get more. Um, so there you go. Um, so that's at 60 hertz. So let's um, let's turn this down. So we know that. So let's take a look at our THD um, and. Uh, Oopsie, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do THD. <coughs> okay, so here we go. We're going to start bringing the voltage back up. And we'll start cranking it up until we get right where we were, which is one... St yeah, that's clipping and back there. So that should be our 20 volts, 50 watts output. And our THD is 0 0.05 percent and change and what does our manual say harmonic distortion less than 0.01 two milliwatts to max power all frequencies okay well clearly we're not hitting that spec uh but we're not <laughs> we're not missing it by much frankly and i'm not sure that i believe this to be quite honest like I feel like this is kind of fudged and in any case um, there's other reasons it could be different too For number one uh, I'm pretty sure that in 1973 HP didn't measure this with a Keithley um, you know 2015 multimeter and uh, they probably uh, also didn't have little bits of stray inductance in their power resistors that they were measuring with because those 
certainly have a little bit of inductance to them. I mean, not much. I mean, certainly not as much as a speaker would, right? But anyway, uh, so there's... I'm quite happy with 0.05% at full power. Um, let's back it off a bit. And, uh, yeah, as we bring the power down, the distortion really isn't coming down a lot. Uh, yeah. It, it really, oh, now we're getting to the point where it's... Now that's very interesting as we get to a very low signal level. very low signal level, we're, we're getting half a percent. So that tends to tell me that perhaps these multimeter wires are picking up some stray. There could, there's all sorts of opportunities for stray crud to get in here. And I don't believe that the THD is really half a percent. What I think is going on here is that the signal output is so low that whatever noise is leaking into these wires is now a greater portion of the signal than it was. So following that logic, let me bring this thing up back up to full output. Following that logic, that number might actually be a good bit lower than 0.05, and maybe it is down to 0.01, and I'm just getting noise in my rig. Anyway, I'm happy with it. It definitely shows us that the amp is not distorting in any serious way. So let's take a look at the, let's switch these back here and take a look at the THD on the other channel. Again, both channels driven. Well, let's start off with one on the first setting. Yeah, 0.6, I, I, I don't believe that. That is what's going on there is that the output signal is so low that whatever noise is in this in these test leads is getting picked up as distortion. Um, yeah, 0 0.02, definitely. Wait, what? Okay, <laughs> 0 0.04 as we are approaching full output here, 0 0.03, and here we are at full output, 0.03. Zero, zero, or sorry, point zero four and change. So yeah, very, very similar uh, measurements, one channel to the next, and we know that it puts a full twenty watts out at sixty hertz. So let's um, let us change the source frequency to one k. Okay, and now I'm going to start bringing it up. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do some horizontal scaling over here so we can see the waveform. Point oh two seven, so definitely less THD at one K than we were seeing at sixty. At least, you know, it's always possible that there was noise in there. Now, so let's see here. Let's see what kind of power we're getting at one K. So let's uh, go back into AC volts mode. Ooh, only 18.4 volts, so we're not getting the full 20 volts output. And if I go to the next step on the attenuator, it clips, but it clips way up there. I think what's going on here is that I need to adjust the source voltage a little bit because the amp is, it, it's, as we know, it's got a base boost down here in, in the lower frequencies, and so the amplitude we were getting out of our 60 hertz measurement is going to be greater than the amplitude we're getting out of our 1K measurement. And as it so happens, because the attenuator is in two decibel steps, this uh, this 
volume setting is you know only 18.5 volts and the next one is clipped so let's see if we can bridge the gap by adjusting the uh, voltage output so let's go to voltage let's try 1.45 volts and see what happens okay so we're still not clipped and we're getting closer to 20 AC, at least according to the key site. But again, I don't trust it. Uh, but if we go to AC volts here, we'll see it's less. No, it's not much less. 19.789 volts. So we're, yeah, so we're getting close to our full 50 watts output here. It's just a question of, uh, of the source being a needing to be come up a little bit due to the uh, amplifier's slightly less sensitivity at that, at that frequency. So let's... Um, Let's uh, change that to, we did 1.45, let's do 1.55, and that's clipping um, a little bit, so let's, well first let's turn the amplifier down so I don't fry a fuse, and uh, let's, uh, whoops, source, enter, enter, menus on this are a little annoying and let's go down to like 1.52 volts here and then we'll bring we'll bring this back up there we go that's a nice clean unclipped waveform and the ac volts 20.7 so yeah we've got we're getting close back to 51 watts again so let's uh then take a look at our uh, distortion uh, where am I going here? Shift THD. Okay, 0.1%. So I guess we're starting to just, we're not quite clipping, but we're starting to flat top a little bit, right? I'm going to bring it down one click. Yeah, I bring the output down. <clears throat> that significantly lowers the THD. So even though we can't really see clipping on this waveform right here, it's happening a little bit. Um, Ooh, I can smell this amplifier heating up. Um, so let's uh, let's take the uh, source and bring the amplitude down to 1.5 volts exactly. And then let's uh, let's take a look at the THD again. Uh, I guess we're looking at uh, AC volts. Let's bring it back up to. There, 20.4, there's our spot. I don't see any clipping. What does the THD meter say? 0.027, there we go. So that we're not clipping there at all. Um, yeah, so there it is, it, 50 watts at 1K. 0.02% uh, distortion or 0 0.03. Again, not quite as low as it's specified in the book, but I'm gonna owe that up to imperfections in my rig and probably not running a shielded wire into this tester might have something to do with that. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I guess that is about it. We, we've tested both channels. We've got the frequency response matching the book. We've got this thing putting out its full rated power. I guess the only thing left is to sit back and listen to it and enjoy it. And uh, for that, I'm going to break out my vintage AKG sextets that are in whoa, nearly new condition. Um, and uh, one thing I've noticed about this amplifier, this is just kind of strange, is that when you plug in the headphone jack, it does not disconnect the speakers. And not only that, there's no way to disconnect the speakers from the front panel. So when, when you want to do quiet headphone listening on this amplifier, you have to reach behind and unplug the speakers. Uh, luckily, or unluckily, depending on how you want to look at it, these Jones plugs make disconnecting the speakers, you know, pretty straightforward. You just unscrew it and, well, easier said than done, right? You just unscrew it and pop it out. Um, but yeah, so anyway... I guess this completes the leg, the legacy of, of, of the Barney Oliver. It's all back together, and uh, 
hours and hours of work. And here is the bag of parts. We wound up replacing all of those original Sprague 30D series electrolytics, a few transistors, which we covered in previous videos, and all of these are resistors that I replaced inside the stepped attenuator. And I did a did an episode just on that, if you want to see what I did and why I did it. Um, I did not replace the two large main filter capacitors uh, for two reasons. Number one, I cannot find the correct replacements at the moment. Uh, they're back ordered. And number two, the ones that are in there test fine. I have uh, charged them up to full voltage and tested for leakage current and haven't found any. The ESR is still within spec and, you know, they're, they're in good shape. So for now, we're done. Anyway, if you made it this far and you watched this whole thing, thank you very, very much. Be sure to like, thumbs up, subscribe, and all that other BS. Um, or don't, you know, that's cool too. All right, have a good evening.